What up, Reader Fam? Today I'm going to be sharing with you the books I'm planning to read in the month of September. Now, I normally do seasonal TBRs, but I decided that I'm going to be doing monthly TBRs up until the end of the year because next year I'm not going to be making any more TBR videos. <gasps> what? No, what? What? You heard what I said. It's time to put them to rest. I'm going to bury them in the past and move forward. There are a lot of reasons for this, but mostly just the fact that my channel is going to look a lot different next year. So I'm going to enjoy this content while I can. Without further ado, let's get started. First up here, I have the Book Explosion Book of the Month for the month of September, and we are partnering with Penguin Teen, and that book is... Wapa Sea Fire by Natalie C. Parker. Give me that sea, give me that fire, put them together, we've got sea fire. This story is about a girl named Saladonia who is seeking revenge on the corrupt warlord Eric. She ends up putting together a pirate crew full of women who form a sisterhood over shared experiences with this corrupt warlord. They've all been treated badly by this douche canoe and they're gonna do something about it. They're gonna sink his canoe. Together they set out to take down this man who has caused them pain and suffering. Yo ho! Oh, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. I haven't read many pirate books. I know that I've read a few where there are pirates as like side characters and whatnot, but I've never read a book where it's like, pirates, you're reading about pirates. Arg, matey. But even the books that I have read where there are pirates on the side, I can't even recall what they're called right now. Like I can't think of a specific book that has pirates in it. I know that I've read some, but I just can't think of any right now. What I'm trying to say here though, is that that makes me really excited to read this book, to read a book following pirates. Pirates. Women pirates nonetheless. Normally we follow a crew of male pirates, but here we've got some female pirates and I am here for it. We are the pirates who don't do anything. We just stay at home and read all day. My remix of the VeggieTales classic. I really hope that some of you get that reference. I love a good revenge story where one person does another person wrong and that person doesn't want to put up with the crap anymore. So they let that crap fuel them and get their revenge. I'm also just excited for this because I'm excited to see these women come together and get revenge on this man who has done them wrong. It's nice to have a book where women are teaming up to take down this guy instead of women going up against each other. I feel like that's been done way too many times. Also just the trope of women women going up against each other is trash. So I'm stoked to read a book where women are empowering each other. Again, this is our book special book of the month for the month of September. So if it sounds interesting to you, then definitely pick it up and join us for our live show at the end of the month. Next up here, I have The Last Leaves Falling by Sarah Brinwell. This story is about a boy named Abe who is diagnosed with ALS at the age of 17. He begins to lose function in different parts of his body as the illness begins to take away his freedom to move. Due to this, he is unable to go to school. So he has to do school school from home. So in order for him to kind of have some sort of social life, he ends up turning to chat rooms. And on these chat rooms, he ends up forming friendships that he's really happy with because he doesn't feel like these people are pitying him and his situation. And I believe that essentially we just follow his path into the unknown as this illness begins to take over his body. I was initially intrigued by this book because of the fact that we have a young character that's dealing with ALS. I had a very distant family member pass away from ALS. I don't even really know if I could consider that person a family member because it was like my cousin's brother-in-law. But regardless, I saw the effect that it had on him and also his family. And I'm really curious to see what it looks like for a teenager to deal with ALS. I'm sure that whole aspect of the book is going to mess me up emotionally, so I really gotta prepare myself for that. I was also really interested in picking up this book because it's set in Japan, and I really want to read more books set in Japan because I'm just so fascinated with the Japanese culture. So if you have any recommendations for books set in Japan, let me know down below in the comments. Specifically ones that are written by Japanese authors. I'm pretty sure this author is not Japanese. Next up here, I have The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. This story takes place in Fairfold, which is this place where fairies and human exist side by side. I think for the most part, they get along if they mind their own business. And in Fairfold, there is this glass coffin that holds this horned boy that just lays to rest. He's just on display for all to see. If you want to see the horned boy, all you got to do is walk up to this clear coffin, which that alone is just super creepy. Like one of our great graveyards were like that? Like what if they just had these clear coffins just sitting everywhere and you could just see people's bodies? 
Count me out on that. So one day, the boy in this glass coffin wakes up, and this causes chaos. It basically flips Fairfold on its head. They don't know what to do about this, because nobody saw this happening. Now, I'm not sure if this horned boy is a threat or anything, or if he's dangerous, but regardless, it sounds like people are pretty scared of him. We follow Hazel and her brother, who spent their childhood kind of in awe of this boy in this coffin. In fact, they used to play games of pretend with this horned boy in mind. That he is a prince, and they are knights, and they must protect him. But now that the boy has awakened, Hazel realizes that she might actually have to take on the role of being a knight to protect herself, but mostly her brother. Now, I could be real wrong with that description, but that's the vibe that I'm getting here. And I'll be honest, I'm kind of nervous about this book because I just recently DNF'd The Coldest Girl in Cold Town. I decided that I should not waste my time with that book. I wasn't enjoying it. In my opinion, the characters were really dry and just the world was really bland. And I fear that this book will fall into that same distaste. Though that book was was about vampires, which was not the thing that I didn't like about it. In fact, I think she took a really original approach to vampires with that book. They didn't feel cliche at all. But this story has a focus on fairies, which I feel like might be Holly's strong suit. So I'm hoping that that ends up shining through and that I end up really enjoying this book. I also wanted to read this book before I got around to The Cruel Prince because I've heard that there are a few things that connect this book to that book. It's not necessarily necessary to read this book before The Cruel Prince, but I kind of want to see the links between the books. Next up, I plan to read the House with a Clock in Its Walls by John Belair. This story follows a boy named Lewis who is forced to move in with his uncle after the passing of his parents. When he gets to his uncle's house, he finds that his uncle is rather out of the ordinary. Sometimes he feels like he's got a screw loose. That's when he finds out that his uncle and his uncle's neighbor are both witches. And this really excites Lewis, but then he tries to join his uncle and his neighbor in their magical abilities. And through this experiment, Lewis accidentally resurrects the original owners of his uncle's house. Which would be fine and all if the original owners weren't trying to obliterate humankind. Now, Lewis and his uncle and his uncle's neighbor must work out a plan to get rid of them. And apparently it's not going to be easy. This is a book that I forgot that I have, which is honestly kind of embarrassing. But either way, there is a movie adaptation coming out for this book this month, and I really want to watch the movie. But I decided that since I have the book, I should read the book before I watch the movie, you know? Especially when the book is only like 179 pages and should be easy to get through. I'm also really excited about this book because it sounds like a book that I'm kind of of in the mood for right now, aka a book that gives off kind of a Halloween vibe. I've pretty much convinced myself that every day leading up to Halloween from now on is Halloween. And you can't tell me otherwise because I'm not gonna listen. It's Halloween, it's Halloween, it's Halloween, it's Halloween. Am I the only one that feels this way? Yes, no, maybe so? Last on my list here, I have Iron Cast by Destiny Soria. This book takes place in Boston in 1919 and we follow two characters. First up, we've got Ada, who is the daughter of immigrants, and then we've got Corrine, who is an heiress. The two come from very different worlds but they're both connected. Together, the two are both able to create illusions through art. And they do just that at the Cast Iron nightclub. The Cast Iron owner actually hires the two to take on a rather dangerous mission, but the two are up for it. They just didn't realize how dangerous it would be. It ends up leaving Ada imprisoned, and Corrine has to be the one to save her. I'm mostly excited for this book because I found that I really enjoy historical fantasy books, but I haven't read very many, and I need to fix that and read more. Give me, give me more. I believe this is another another book where there is a focus on sisterhood. We've got a nice friendship between Ada and Corrine. They really trust each other and they empower each other and they want to be there for each other. Also, I'm just really curious to see how this magic system comes into play. There are many different magical abilities that are showcased throughout this and they each involve some kind of art form. There are people called songsmiths who can sing songs and kind of affect people's emotions. Then there are wordsmiths who can use their words to create illusions. I think there are other forms of magic showcased as well throughout this book, so I'm looking forward to see those come into play. So those are five books that I have planned to read in the month of September. Obviously, I would like to read more than just these five books, but these are on my priority list. You guys should let me know down below in the comments some books that you're reading in the month of September, or let me know down below in the comments if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I post videos frequently on this channel, so if you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe, or go and click the little bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye, chew.